Amen, church. Find somebody to say hello to this morning. seat. Hey, if you're a guest with us this morning, we want to thank you for being here. We do know that there are a lot of incredible churches in our city where you could worship and we're thrilled that you chose Hermitage Hills. We are a church that believes in one thing and that one thing is this, that we want to see people experience life change through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And everything that we do as a church is about that. Now, when you came in, you should have received a connect guide. Um, if, well, I need everybody to grab one of those right now. If you did not receive one of those on your way in, could you slip up your hand? One of our hosts is, they're over here on the sides. They'd love, there's one in the back over there. They would love to get you one of those because uh, they're very, very important for you to have. There's another one right up here. Um, within, within this Connect Guide, there's an informational sheet that you could pull out that talks about all the different ministry opportunities that you can get involved in. We as a church really believe that it is our job to provide opportunity for you to grow spiritually, but it's um, your job to take the step in and get involved. Now, you can see all sorts of things that are going to be happening there. Um, Wednesday night groups are going to be kicking off with all the different ministries there, so you could jump into an elective there. Um, there's student ministry stuff you can get involved in, but read through all of those things and find some things that you can get involved in. Starting off this year in 2019, Team to, to grow spiritually. Now, if you're a guest with us today, um, I would ask all of you to open up that connect guide, open it up. On the, on the far right side, there is a perforated card. Everybody go ahead and pull that card off. That was pretty good. One, two, three, rip that off. Woo, we all have it. That's great. Now, if you're a guest with us and you're saying, man, I would really love to be able to get plugged in to Hermitage Hills. I've got some questions and would like to be able to find a place. This is a great way for you to communicate with us as, as a church team. So go ahead and jot down your information and whatever questions that you may have. And we'll get back to you this week with those answers. Also, just as a way of simply saying thanks to you for coming, we'd love to send you out a card with a gift. We're giving away free smoothies just for visitors, okay? So don't make up a fake name and put your address in there and do all of that. It's just, just one smoothie, but it's a nice way just for us to be able to say thanks to you for coming. And our pastor's going to be sending a card. Now, everybody turn back and look. Pastor Polly is literally right in the back. If you're a guest, he's waving. He has a, another gift for you and in an informational bag about our church. I would encourage you to stop by and a coffee mug. A coffee mug, it is going to get cold here eventually, um, but you can um, grab that from him at the end of service. He would be honored to be able to meet you. Um, I want to read for you guys a couple of verses as the hosts come forward. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 are three of my favorite verses. It says this, God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for it credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do good things he planned for us long ago. Now, I absolutely love these verses because it shows us this, that church was never meant to be a spectator sport. We experience salvation when we invite Christ into our heart, and that literally should be just the beginning. Then what begins to happen is we become 
Christ's hands and feet in the lives of people is that's where our faith becomes so real and so exciting that we go, man, this, this truly is what life is all about. Now, throughout this whole month, we're going to be just trying to highlight and give thanks to people that have said, hey, I've found my place, I've jumped in, and I've started serving. Now, the first area that we want to highlight this, um, this month is this, is our Connect team. Rick Short is right over here. Can you wave, Rick? Rick heads up our Connect team, and this team does a whole lot of good in the lives of people. And they're always looking for new people. Now, I know a lot of times whenever we think, oh man, it's, it's service, it's, it's another thing. Well, uh, here's the thing. In the first seven minutes when people walk into a church, they're deciding whether or not they're ever going to come back again. And the people that you see up here who are greeting, who are at doors, who are driving vans, um, working the welcome center, what they're doing is they're saying, hey, I want to be the expression of Christ to every person who walks into our building. We all should want to do that. We all can jump in for once a month to be able to do that because you never know the stories of the people that are walking in. Everybody has a story and a lot of people are hurting when they walk into this place and they're looking for hope. And this team is the front line to be able to, to give somebody a hug, to shake a hand, to smile, to help them find their way around. And what they are is they're being Jesus' hands and feet in the lives of people. Now, we would encourage you, looking at this passage of Scripture, it's, I, could, I could say this. Here's the thing. All of us in this place have a spot that we can invest to advance God's kingdom. There's no question. It's not me. It's Scripture. It's there. So as we have these opportunities, you could jump in and serve once a month. Let's try it and see what happens. Because living your faith and playing out church is like a spectator sport was never the way it was ever intended. The church becomes amazing when we all say, I'm going to find my spot and I'm going to jump in and I'm going to get engaged. Now, can we give this team and Rick thanks this morning for what they do? This team has helped with our uh, Christmas Eve. They've helped park people. They've helped with funerals. They help. I mean, they're, they're here all the time. And we are so, so, so grateful for them. And also very grateful for Rick and, and your leadership in this area. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this morning. And God, I thank you for the fact that we are a church where I know so many people are engaged in so many different ways to be able to to further your kingdom in the lives of others. And Lord, I pray that that culture would continue to exist and continue to grow. And Lord, I know that there are some in this room that your spirit is, is moving on their hearts to take a step in and get involved somewhere. I pray throughout this month that they would, that they would just take a chance and get involved. And that God, I know that as they do that, their hearts will be affirmed by you as they are, are finding their purpose and meaning for life. Lord, we thank you for this church's generosity. God, I am always blown away by that. And Lord, I thank you for the hearts of people to know that what they have is truly yours. And during this time, this is simply an act of worship to give back to you what is rightfully yours. God, I know that there's so many that, that give online. Uh, at hermitagehills.com and they text and they give in money that way, that they uh, mail in money, that they drop an offering or uh, stop by the church office to be able to do that too. And Lord, we thank you for that because God, we know that as that happens, there are more and more people that are able to experience life change through, through Jesus Christ because of the generosity of the people in this room. In Jesus name, amen. Hey, we want to say a special welcome to those who are watching on live stream this morning. And we want to say thank you for being a part of our worship service this morning. If you're watching on Facebook Live, we'd encourage you just to make a post and say hello and tell us where you're watching from. But church, we're going to continue in worship this morning. Worship the God who gives life and brings dead bones and makes those come to life. You are love, 
scripture passage over you in just a moment, but whether you recognize this or not this morning, the truth daily confronts us that there is an enemy who is out to wreck our lives. 
In fact, I would go even a step further. Scriptures tells us that he exists to steal, kill, and destroy. This morning, it's no... There's nothing about it that is hidden, the fact that there are people here this morning who are hurting. There are people who've walked through our doors today. Maybe it's you who have experienced the loss of a loved one this holiday season. Maybe you and your wife are going through a difficult time and are on the verge of losing your marriage. Maybe there's someone in here who's contemplating self-harm or something like that, and it's just wrecking your life. This morning, we're going to sing a song for the first time, and I'm praying, I hope that it becomes an anthem, not just selfishly because I really like the song, but I think it's a song that our church needs to sing right now. There are sometimes there are songs that we want to sing, and then there are songs that sometimes we need to sing. And I think this song articulates a part of Scripture that we need to be reminded of. But the passage from Romans chapter 8, verse 31 What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? I hope that brings chill bumps right now to somebody this morning who's hurt. I hope that brings comfort this morning to somebody who is in pain. Because we serve a God who is sovereign over all things. He spoke creation into existence just like that. Yet, still at the same time, individually, every single one of us, he is fighting. He is fighting for us. So, again, listen to these words, and we're going to sing them over. Not flesh and bone. You are not weak or slow. You're everything brave and bold. You're fighting for us. not angry or closed and even in ways we don't know you're fighting for us
Before we go into the preaching and teaching of God's word this morning, you know, oftentimes we wait to the end of the service before we sometimes we bow down and we confess sin. But if you think about it, why would we not want to bow before the Lord and confess our sin before we open up the preaching and teaching of God's word? So this morning, what we're going to do is the team and I, we're going to sing this chorus a couple more times. But for some of you, you're hurting this morning. Get that because I hurt oftentimes, whether it's the sin in my own life or maybe it's the way that circumstances just get the best of me. This morning, I want to allow you that opportunity in just a second. Like I said, we'll begin singing, and I want you guys just to feel the freedom just to come up here and maybe just kneel down. Maybe you want to bring your husband or your wife to pray with you, maybe a friend. Maybe you want to come by yourself because it's something that just needs to be done, just you and God. But again, we're just going to sing, oh, come to the altar. And again, you just move and you just assume the posture that God is calling you to take right now before we get into the preaching and teaching of the word. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was born. Precious blood of Jesus Christ, oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. God who's fighting for you right now. And oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Bow down before
every single day you are going before us father this morning we want to thank you we want to thank you that you are a god who performs miracles and the greatest miracle that we can see is someone who is far from christ someone who is dead in their sin coming alive God it's my prayer that someone here today before they leave that would happen in their life maybe they've been wrestling maybe they've been struggling with what it means to follow you with their life not just become a professional Christian who comes to church in 2019 but someone who truly surrenders their heart and their life to the Lordship of your son Jesus God I pray that that happens today maybe it's already happened God, maybe that person would feel the, the courage and the freedom in a place where we all stand here together united as people who are flawed, as people who don't have it together. There's not a single person here in, here in this room, God, that we would claim that we have it together. God, we stand on equal ground at the foot of your cross. God, thank you for loving us so much. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Sweet, 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 huh? Precious time as the family gathers and shares and sings and prays and confesses and helps and stands with and kneels with one another. That's the joy and the privilege of being a part of the body of Christ. So I'm going to invite you to take your Bible out, maybe you brought with you in paper or digital form, and turn to a place in Matthew chapter 28. If you've been around church very long, it's a pretty familiar passage. It's kind of the, the kicking off point of where we're going for the entire month of January as we consider uh, taking deeper steps and further steps as followers of Jesus and to what did Jesus really call us to um, as, as a follower, as one who would attach ourselves as a disciple? What does that mean for us personally? What does that mean maybe it's for someone else that God would want us to attach ourselves to that we're going to talk about all during the month? It's a series called One-on-One. -on -One. And so today, to kind of kick it off for us, I've asked Coach Fred Wheeler Give Coach Fred a hand for being up here with me today. You Coach Fred. Do better than that. Yeah, yeah, that was not. Oh, that was weak. You <laughs> do better than that. <laughs> Thank you. Is, that, is, that my, is this mic on? Somebody give me a thumbs up. Is this, is is this on? We're good? Okay, cool. Okay. Um, so Coach Fred here is Chairman Deacons in our church. He's doing a great job with our servant leaders. We appreciate he and his wife and their leadership in so many ways. And this year, especially with our servant leaders, our deacons. And so, but today I've asked Coach Fred to kind of help me a little bit uh, with this whole one-on-one -on -one concept. So, so tell me, how did Coach, how did Coach come about for you? Okay, first of all, this is live stream, right? Yes, it is. We are live stream. Our son and daughter, Kelly and Scott, they're going to be watching. Hello, hey, Yaya says hey too. Uh, Yaya? Yaya. Okay. That's great for grandmother. We got three granddaughters living in Reno, Nevada. Hey, girls, this is really cool, right? Yaya is here. <laughs> okay. Uh, I spent 43 years in education as administrator, uh, classroom teacher, and coach. Uh, taught at all levels, uh, elementary through the college level. Uh, coached five different sports in high school, not all at the same time, obviously. But uh, most of my time coaching was spent with girls basketball, 30 years worth. Still sane. I have good days, and Becky told me this is a good day for me, so <laughs> I'm still got it together, but I uh, really enjoyed the 30 years coaching uh, girls basketball. So a lot in 43 years, obviously, in five different sports, but today, this whole 30 years of basketball, and I don't know a whole lot about, about basketball and, and those things, so as we talk about one-on-one, -on -one, I, I, I believe in basketball, there's two basic defenses. There's man-to-man, -man yes, and there's zone. Yes, sir. So as I'm turning to you as, as the expert, 
Tell us about man-to-man defense. And as a coach, why would you call that? Okay. Uh, Most coaches today uh, teach man-to-man defense. Uh, When I was coaching, it was probably about half and half a zone, which is another type, and man-to-man. Right. But uh, man-to-man is basically what's taught today. It is a very, very difficult defense to, uh, to teach. It takes a lot of time. You've got to practice it every day. You have to really invest in, in teaching and learning man-to-man. And uh, uh, when I taught my girls man-to-man, it was assigning them to a certain opponent. And I would tell them, you are glued to her for the entire game. Unless somebody takes her spot, she is yours. Never, ever leave her. Now, we would practice what would happen if she got beat. But during the game, we never talked about that. We only talked about never, never get beat. She's assigned to you and never, never lose her. So man-to-man is I'm assigned to another player. I'm to attach myself with... Glue. Glue, yes, sir. And everywhere they go, I go. Yes, sir. And I'm playing offense, defense. I'm with, I'm, 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 I'm with it. Yes, sir. So zone. How, how does zone defense? What does that work? How's zone that work? Uh, is not as aggressive. That's one of the reasons I like man-to-man or teaching man-to-man. It's a you much like that more aggressive. aggressive. I like that okay. aggressiveness. Uh, hair on fire playing that way. Uh, zone is more of a, a, a soft defense. A girl is assigned an area. She takes care of her area whenever the ball is passed to a player in her area. Then she guards the ball and that person. But it's very, it, to me, it's a passive defense. I like the aggressive one-on-one. You're more the man on man, man to man. Man to man, yes, sir. So tell me, um, two things you said is interesting. It's hard to teach. Yes, sir. Why is that? Uh, you have to work together as a team, not so much uh, with a zone, but you have to really work together as a five-man team playing man-to-man. You help each other out at times. Uh, That's why it's called, uh, or I called it a helping man-to-man. So you really have to stay focused, stay with your man, play together, and know that your teammates are there for you. The other word, aggressive. Very aggressive, yes, sir. How is that? Well, you, you teach your girls not to get beat. If they get beat, then it's letting their team down. And that is something that you always, always work toward is playing as part of a team, nodding, not letting your teammates down, and believing in each other. Wow. Excellent. Coach Fred, man-to-man, zone, defense. Thank you, sir. Give Coach Fred a hand. So, when we, when we talk about uh, this series, we talk about one-on-one, we're talking about man-to-man. And we'll use that term, that's a generic term uh, for non-gender. It's not just for men only, it's for all of us. So, we're talking about the vision of our church to help people see life change through Jesus Christ as we do life together, love our community, impact our city, fortify our nation, embrace the world. And so, we're, we're looking in January uh, to challenge one another uh, and to help one another and to assist one another to take deeper steps into this vision and mission and the gospel of Christ together. And so I'm, I'm going to ask you to be a little vulnerable uh, this morning for me right now. Just, just to be dead level honest and it's okay for that in the room. When you talk about uh, learning and growing in your faith, there's a lot of ways to do that. But probably the one that's, that's, that's really clearly evident in Scripture is where Jesus calls us to be fishers of men, and then he commands us to go and make disciples that we'll read in just a moment. Disciples make disciples. Now, if we were to evaluate that, if we were to be honest and evaluate that, let's, let's look at the room and let's see honestly how this is taking place in our lives. How many of us, don't raise your hand yet, how many of us in the room can remember a time that was for at least six months or longer? that you met with at least once a week or for sure at least 
twice a month. Uh, twice a month or probably once a week. You met. A woman met with another woman. A man met with another man. And they were pouring into you what God had taught them they were teaching you. And the whole goal was to raise you up in faith so you could do that to, for someone else. Faithful men who teach, who teach others also is the concept in Scripture, right? How many of us in the room say, I, I can recall a time, at least six months or longer, where as a woman I met with another woman, as a man I met with another man, one-on-one -on -one in discipleship and spiritual growth, and then I took that and I helped disciple someone else. How many of us in the room can remember a time like that in your spiritual journey? Raise your hand. Okay, keep them up real high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, about 20, 25, something like that. Okay. So what does that tell us? How, how, how do we see that? What, what does that mean? You see, today I, I want us to, I want us to re, I want us to remember the real call of Jesus on our lives. And then I want us to see an example of someone who took that call and did something with it. You see, I think that church is a wonderful thing, and this gathering is a wonderful thing, but are we really connecting to the essence of what Jesus commanded us to? Are we really involved in investing in other people's lives on a level that causes us not only to be invested in, but to invest in someone else. You see, sad to say, some of us have been around church for maybe a year or so, or decades. And as you sit here, as you're watching on live stream and you're a follower of Jesus, you, many of us, by obvious in the room, many of us are going, I've never been one-on-one -on -one in that kind of journey yet. What did Jesus really mean when he said, here's the call, become fishers of men? And then what did he mean when he left and he said, all authority has been given to me, therefore, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. Not so much what the large church, the church universal, obviously, we connect to that. But it's more of the icing on the cake. What's the meat? What's the cake? What's the, what's the ground zero? What's the main theme of being a disciple of Jesus? And I would submit to you that I believe the essence of what Jesus called us to is disciples make disciples. And everyone says, I want to learn from and I want to help teach others. I want to learn from I want to teach others. The essence of the power of the gospel maybe is being a little watered down because we're not really connecting to the depth of what Jesus was trying to call us to. It's more of a broader scope, a bigger picture, which is a beautiful thing. But does he want to take a floodlight and bring it to a laser beam in our lives as Jesus followers to where we could do something maybe a little different? Inside your connection, would you grab this little card that we, we put there? Because at Hermit Hills, we don't want to just teach truth. We don't want to just read truth. We don't want to just talk about truth. We want to help you take next steps into truth into the call of disciples making disciples. So we've made this little card for you. And, and today I'm not expecting you to do anything except just hold it, just consider it, just begin the journey. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm asking us to consider this quote at the very top of the card. It comes on the screen. As one person, I cannot change the world, but I can change the world of one person. Sometimes we make things so big and so huge, it's beyond the scope of really considering. So what 
I want us to do as a church is bring it down to something really simple. That says, I may not be able to change the world as one person, but I, I believe God can use me to change the world of one person. And so there's three things I'm, I'm asking you to consider. Three categories. Now, you're saying, now wait a minute, you went from one to nine. Oh, well, that's because I know what happens. I know what happens. And that is, as we, as we journey through the year, the nine hopefully will just turn into one. Because I know when we get things together and people, man, start moving forward. And I, I know we get groups together and, man, we got 50 when we start out. And then, man, a few months later, we got 30. And then a couple weeks later, we got 20. And then at the end of the time, we got two. <laughs> so maybe if you just, just prayerfully look through these three categories. Number one, who would be three people you would pray for every day in 2019? Could there be just three people? that you pray for every day in 2019. Who would God lay on your heart? Second, during 2019, who would be some people you would seek to share the life-changing gospel with? Who, who would be someone you would pray for and then maybe be that someone that you would share the gospel with in 2019? And then third, who would be some people you would begin to consider, I'm going to make a personal investment in 2019. I'm going to meet one-on-one, -on -one, man to man. Now, interesting what Coach Fred said. Did you catch on to that? He said, man to man, one-on-one -on -one is the hardest thing to teach. I found that interesting. I think also for the church, that can ring true as well. But man, we're going to tackle it. We're going to go for it. We're going to give it all we got during this whole month. We're going to go to places in Scripture. We're going to remind ourselves this incredible calling that God has placed on us as followers of Jesus, disciples making disciples. Who would you pray for? Who would you share with? Who would you get one-on-one -on -one with? Would it not be incredible that we go to 2020? Now, that sounds so bizarre. Does that sound bizarre to y'all? 2020. I remember growing up thinking about 2020. And it was, it was, man, if I ever make it to 2020, I'm going to be living in the year of the Jetsons. You know what I'm talking about? Here's George Jetson, his son, Elroy, yeah. His daughter, yeah. So his wife, you guys are incredible, yes. But the whole Jetsons was the little cars. I don't know where they got that noise, but that was like, I want something a little more than that. But 2020, man, it's like, it's here. Could we, could, would it not be incredible in 2020 if I asked that question again, every hand was raised? I only allowed someone to invest in me, but I invested in someone else. Would it not be incredible if every one of us who may be seeking Christ, come to Christ, and those who have come to Christ, follow Christ in such a way that we really take the call of Christ, I mean, serious. Coming to church is wonderful. Being a group is wonderful. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to challenge us to go to a little bit deeper step. Man, the 2019 turns around. You come 12 months later and you go, man, look what God did in me and look what God did through me. This is my Paul, and I'm the Timothy, and, and now I became a Paul, and I have a Timothy that we're going to see today. Wouldn't that be incredible? Matthew 28, let's stand together. Ready? I'm going to have to fly. Matthew 28, 19 to 20, page 844 in the chair Bible, if you're still looking for it. Jesus is like, here it is. Here's the essence of the gospel. Here's a call on every believer. All authority has been given to me. And on that authority, I command you, verse 19, go therefore and what? Make disciples of all nations. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Well, then what do you do? You're going to teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. 
And what am I going to be assured with? And behold, I am with you, what? How long? To the end of the age. Now, if you've been around church, man, you've seen this. You've seen this. You've seen this. How's it going for me? How's it going for you? How's it going for us? Making disciples. It doesn't say go to church. It says go and make disciples. He's speaking to disciples to make disciples. That's the context of the passage. So today, on behalf of Christ, I'm speaking to disciples to make disciples. Amen? Holy Spirit, teach us by your word. You may be seated. So here we are. Two things. Number one, in 2019, remember the call. Come back to the call. Drill it down simply. What does Jesus call me to as a follower of Christ? What does he call me to? He calls you to something that goes deeper than a simple surface religion. He, he doesn't call you to a, a title or to the nomination or to a label that man has made. But he calls you and he calls me to be someone who's making disciples. And this phrase, make disciples, for us means much more than just someone who's learned something. But someone who is attached to one's teacher like glue and to become his follower in doctrine, conduct, and life. And shares that with someone else. I mean, it's not, it's not hard to understand. But as we saw presented, it seems to be the struggle of the church. To see this call personalized to every follower of Jesus. Not generalized to the the largeness of the church universal, but personalized that God's called me as a disciple, as he's called me, he's calling me to invest in someone else who can invest in someone else to become a disciple. To say we want to see people experience life change is wonderful. To say we want to love our community and impact our city and fortify our nation and brace the world with mission living, that's wonderful. But it comes down to simply, simply gathering in our hearts this unified call for all of us to make a disciple. See, we can get busy with so many good things, we can miss the very best thing. So, it's like this. We've just come through the college football bowl season. It was very depressing for me. First time in decades at FSU wasn't even in a bowl game. I wept bitterly. But I cheered others on. Now, when a team goes to a bowl game, it's an honor. But I guarantee you that the coaches and the players that were, going, that were assigned to play another team, I can guarantee you they spent hours watching film of the team that was going to be their opponent. As a team, they would watch these films. As individuals, they would watch these films. They would want to know who they were up against and they would know who was across from them and they would watch their moves. They would watch their plays and they would watch how they would handle certain situations when the game would proceed. And they would have some preparation of how they would respond to that. I mean, hours that would move into days, that would move into weeks to do one thing, and that has come out victorious in the Sugar Bowl, Fiesta Bowl, 
Orange Bowl, Sugar Bowl, No Bowl, whatever. And I think about that, and I think about what if I, as a follower of Jesus, and our church as followers of Jesus, we would pay that much attention to Jesus, to watch his life so intently and so closely that we would know his moves and his calls and his plays in his life, and it would compel us to know him so well that we internalize that and personalize that. And what did Jesus do with most of his time? He made disciples. Amen. Jesus did a lot of stuff. Jesus did a lot of incredible stuff. Jesus did a lot of amazing stuff. But the thing he did the most of was making disciples. And he turns to those disciples and he says, now I want you to go and do for you. What I've done for you, do that for someone else. Go and make disciples. What's that going to look like? You're going to see them baptized. And then the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And what else are you going to do? You're going to teach them the things I've taught you. You're going to teach them also. And how will I be assured? And what will be that which will give me the, the, the strength? I will be with you always. What if the followers of Jesus took the call of Jesus and didn't generalize it, but personalized it It did something with it? What if this year you would pray for, you would share with, and you would disciple one? It's the hardest thing to teach. It's the most aggressive form of play. Well, where do we see this? What is the example? That's the second thing I want you to see. What is the example you could follow? Well, we've, we've seen it. You realize it. We went to, two summers ago, we went to 1 Timothy. And last summer, we went to 2 Timothy. And these were two letters written by who? Oh, wow. We got to go back over this again. All right. who, who wrote 1 and 2 Timothy? Paul. And he wrote it to who? Timothy. These were letters written to Timothy for Timothy to personalize and then for Timothy to teach. It was Paul discipling Timothy who Timothy could disciple others also. We see this in the life of Paul. There's three steps. First, there's Paul's place. He was playing the role of spiritual father to Timothy. It was Paul's testimony and presentation of the gospel in word and deed that brought Timothy into an investment relationship with Paul that would impact his life and impact the lives of many. Listen, watch this. It's still impacting my life and your life today. Would you like to live a life like that? Hundreds of years later, your life is still impacting other lives. He was this spiritual father. Now, you remember in the study that, that Timothy had a grandmother and a mother, and he had some great investment by those people. But it was Paul who says, you're my child. You're my child in the faith. You're my son. And I'm attaching myself to you. And they did much together. They did much apart. But he was a spiritual father. Second thing about Paul, Paul's purpose. We see Timothy and Paul's relationship. It was one of a cherished pupil and a protege. They spent time together. They were connected. They grew in faith. They grew in the mission of the gospel. 
It impacted generations after generation after generation. Which gives us Paul's plan. Don't miss this. To disciple Timothy, it, was not on to, it wasn't to hold on to Timothy, but it was to train Timothy so that one day he could let him go. To send him out. To multiply himself in Timothy, who then be able to teach others also. See this in Philippians 2, verses 19 through 22 on the screen. Paul says this, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you, so that I too may be cheered by news of you. For I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. For they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. He says this, but you know Timothy's proven worth. How as a what? As a what? As a what? How as a son with a father, me, he has served with me in the gospel. So we see Jesus calling us to this one-on-one relationship of disciples making disciples. We see in the New Testament this example of Paul and Timothy, the father to the son, and from the son who became a father to the many sons in the future. See, I would, I would proclaim and I would say it is to be the heart and desire of every believer to be discipled by another believer. And then we would find ourselves Investing in discipling another believer, who then in turn finds themselves discipling another believer. So there can come a day when one would proclaim, Have you spent this one on one? Have you had a time in your journey, in your life, in your spiritual faith, where you were with one who was with one, who turned around and got with one? And every hand would raise. Man, I wouldn't think it'd be done any other way. How could it be done any other way? But we saw. We saw. In 9 o'clock, it was the same. And I think if I went down to church, it'd be the same. Why is it? Why is it that this this call has been given? And yet I could miss it. And I could live my entire spiritual journey. I've never discipled somebody else. What would it be like if every hand in 2020 is raised? Well, first of all, we'd have to go back to the big house. Because we wouldn't fit in here. What if everyone reached one, everyone prayed for one, everyone discipled one? What if everyone stepped in to the call? An example of what Jesus called us to. I think it'd be New Testament powerful. And I'm going to tell you this in advance. it will be some of the greatest moments in your spiritual journey. Well, you wept with that one who was weeping and you laughed with that one who was laughing and you walked with that one who was stumbling and you picked up that one who was falling and you did life with that one and it didn't stop there. Then you saw that one do the same thing with someone else. Now, this is what I think. Many of us would go, I don't think I'm good enough to do that. I'm not either. To think any of us are good enough 
is a huge mistake. But who is good enough is the one who commands us to do it. He's good enough. And this is what I know. We need Him to do that in each of our lives. 2019, who would be your one? I can't wait to hear the stories. And I just, I didn't think I could do it. I, I didn't think I knew enough. I didn't know. But now, let me tell you what God has done. Let me tell you where God showed up. I got this one now and it's changed my life. It's an amazing journey. Let's pray. With your just in reverent and a moment of just personal reflection, personal examination, personal heart, have you come to a place that you connected to the one, the one who calls you to himself? Have you established a relationship with this one who calls you to this incredible journey in life of sharing with others in deep life purpose? If you haven't, you can, right there where you are, it's, it's an expression of an open heart and open life to say to a God who loves you, Jesus, Thank you for loving me. I need you. I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I turn from my sin. I turn to Christ. Come into my life. Make me a disciple. Help me to make another disciple. To bring glory to your name. To bring glory to your name. To just to bring glory to your name. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand and to worship and to sing this song called, Lord, I Need You. Because, listen, we can't do this kind of stuff in our own strength. We can't impact another life in our own strength. We can't make a disciple in our own strength. we got to have Jesus leading. we got to have Jesus in front of us. we got Jesus showing us. We'll have some folks down front. If you need someone to pray with or talk to or investigate further about what Christ has for you, if you want to connect to our church, you want to take a step into Christ about baptism, we'd love to help you do that. Take a step. Come and tell someone. We'd love to help you. Lord, you're good, gracious, kind. May we be disciples who make disciples. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together.
you'd like to talk to one of our altar counselors that are up here, they'd love to talk with you. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Jesus. This morning, if God has spoken to your heart and you'd love to talk with someone about what it means to be a follower of Jesus, there's a card in the seat back in front of you that says, I said yes. All you have to do is just fill that simple information out. Just check the box that is appropriate. And as you leave today, you can put it in a box at the back of the room, or you can come up here and you can hand it to one of our altar counselors up here, Pastor Andy or Michael or anyone up here. Thanks so much for being here. We look forward to seeing you back on Wednesday night. God bless. Have a great Sunday afternoon.